How much does it cost to host an F1 race? We all know F1 is a multi-billion dollar business, with money at the forefront of every decision it takes. Whether it be new cars, teams, drive to survive, or another addition to the calendar, the world's biggest circus on wheels has never been cheap. 22 races are currently announced this season with spots for 23, whilst 25 circuits hold F1 contracts, as China and Qatar are set to return next year alongside Las Vegas' debut. The specific terms of these deals are a closely guarded secret, but there's one thing that unites almost all of them – they pay to host their races. From building the track to handing money over to F1, it's pretty damn expensive. Let's take a look at how much it costs to host an F1 race and why the countries still want to do it. It should come as no surprise that building an F1 circuit is a redonkulous amount of money. You're joking. Just to build a permanent track totals over $270 million, whilst the Yas Marina circuit and complex cost an eye-watering $1 billion plus. This doesn't include all the extra fees such as FIA circuit inspections and paperwork to be given the FIA Grade 1 license to host the race in the first place. You'd think that if you fancy doing it on the cheap, you'd go for a street circuit, right? Well, it turns out Wrong. they're more expensive than permanent tracks that already exist. Constructing an F1-worthy racetrack out of nothing but public roads is a lot quicker, taking less than a year rather than the several years needed to build a purpose-built venue, but it has a lot more additional costs. Look at Australia's Albert Park, for example. They need to build temporary grandstands, upgrade roads, and then pull it all down to rebuild it again the following year not accounting for all the extra planning involved too. A 2017 study by Forbes estimated that renting grandstands to allow for over 80,000 seats would cost around $14 million. The safety barriers, fencing and renting the pit buildings is over $8 million each. All the offices, vehicles, power and water supplies add an extra $6 million to the total, with $4.5 million for extra costs such as the cranes or the essential fire extinguishers needed every 15 meters. We'll bet that those costs have only continued to rise since then, as F1 tracks look to become more than a race circuit, but an experience for the fans. Circuit hosting fees are a lucrative business for F1. The fees that circuits pay to host a race bring in over a third of the sport's annual revenue, and teams are given a share of this, so the more a circuit pays, the more money in their pockets. On average, it costs a circuit around $40 million a year to host a Grand Prix, bringing in around $700 million annually to F1. Older circuits like Monza, Spa and Silverstone traditionally pay less due to their long existence on the calendar. As a result, newer circuits have to fight to be on the calendar and therefore pay a lot more for the privilege of hosting. Depending on how long the contract is for, these fees can rise by up to 5% for each year of the contract, making it a very expensive business. This makes smaller countries increasingly priced out of the calendar. If you look at the numbers according to RacingNews365.com, Qatar secured a 10-year deal costing them $55 million a year, the same price as Saudi Arabia and Azerbaijan. China and previously Russia both paid $50 million each for their Grand Prix, while Bahrain forks out $45 million. Abu Dhabi's exclusive contract to host the final race of the season costs $40 million, which is the same as Hungary. The return of Australia and Singapore will cost them $35 million each, with Zandvoort and Canada slightly cheaper at $32 million and $30 million respectively. Spain, Austria, the UK, Monza, Japan, Austin, Mexico City and Brazil all pay the same at $25 million. Belgium and France both pay $22 million, while Imola pays $20 million in fees. Monaco has the cheapest hosting fee of all, at a tiny $15 million. If you're wondering why Miami and Las Vegas are absent, well, F1 are staging the event rather than the host city paying for it. This means all the money generated from sponsorship deals, ticket sales and other revenue goes straight to Formula One. The entertainment capital of the world is a massive opportunity for the sport to make big money. So why do countries do it? Surprisingly, despite the high costs, an F1 race can bring a huge economic boom to the area, driving in revenue through tourism, as around 53% of attendees travel to the race from abroad. There's loads of revenue streams, such as fans and teams stopping in hotels, spending money in local businesses, and even the broadcast itself helps provide media coverage to the area, especially city venues which showcase their landmarks. 
From 2012 to 2015, the race at the Circuit of the Americas brought in around $3.6 billion to the Austin metro area. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out everywhere. Both India and South Korea didn't stick around on the calendar long because the benefits failed to materialise and a few years ago we were even at risk of losing Silverstone because the host fees were unsustainable. As F1 markets grow and more countries want to play host, their organisers are going to have to dig deep in their pockets to keep themselves on the calendar. There you have it, an insight into how much it costs to run an F1 race. Should F1 make it cheaper for circuits to host races? Let us know in the comment section below.